Hello everybody. Let's do a self-portrait in color. Uh, this guy right here. This is this is me um, with a lot of color um, on my face. You know, lit lit with uh, color lights. But I have to decide on what type of paper I'm going to use. Now I'm going to be using Conti crayon, um, but I have a number of different colors of paper here. And how do I go about deciding which paper to work on? And let me talk about a few things to, that you want to think about. I've put some swatches out here and I have drawn in the same yellow on each little square here and the border is the same blue. The thing that's different is the substrate. The, the pigment of the actual paper is different on each swatch. And so you can see how the paper actually uh, blends in to the, the actual yellow. And so you get this, uh, these two colors combined. They visually mix. Let me flip them over and you can see as it reveals to you what, um, what that color paper is on its own and how that relates. Now, what are you trying to say? Um, that's always a question that I ask myself when I'm starting a, um, a drawing, a painting, what have you. And is my piece about the color? Is it about the light? Um, what kind of mood am I trying to create? Um, that will all dictate what I choose to do. And also, I'm, I ask myself, what kind of experience do I want to have while I'm working? This idea will work whether you're doing oil on a toned canvas or acrylic on a toned canvas. This idea will work with pastel, um, gouache. And in this case, I'm using color pencil, right? But you will always have a visual mixing because of the translucency in some colors. I think I'm going to begin with this pink, pinkish purple here, because I see some of that in the actual portrait. And I think I want that to be a unifying element or factor throughout the whole piece. Also, there's some bright, vibrant greens, and I think they might pop really nicely as a, as a contrast against the, uh, the pink of the paper. So wish me luck, all right? What I want to do first is map out the form, the structures, the proportions, the perspective of this portrait in the white Conti. The great thing about white Conti is it erases out really easily. Um, this is a great material to use on a painting also. If I had a toned ground and I want to do my drawing first rather than a charcoal, which will actually inevitably affect um, the color over the top, this will not. So you can actually do this um, in lieu of a graphite or charcoal, which is, can be quite nice. So um, you, this may be kind of faint. It may be difficult to see, but I see my eyes at an angle. They're just a little bit of an angle. My brow, I guess I should say. And I like to begin with the intersection between the T-zone here you know, the, 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 the space between the eyes and between the brow line. I like to begin there. But right now, I just want to kind of map in just very basically, you know, what position of that face is going to be, the scale of the, of the head versus the picture plane. Um, it's better to make a mistake at this stage than three quarters of the way in and I've got to race it all out. So... All I'm doing here is getting a sense of the, the composition. I like to draw in a fairly loose manner, um, almost as if I'm drawing from life. This person is sitting in front of me. And the reason why I like to work this way is one, I'm comfortable working this way, but also um, I, I'm, I don't want it to look hyper real. Um, I already have the photo here. Instead, I want it to say something with, in terms of its medium, its color. Um, I want it to be expressive. And now I do want it to look like me. <laughs> and so I'm actually sort of sticking with the shapes, the lights, you know, and the proportions and the perspective. However, I'm totally um, fine if, if, if it looks like, say, a cousin <laughs> or an uncle 
Um, now, if the, this person were in front of me, I wouldn't wouldn't be able to work in specifics at all, would I? Um, because the person is constantly moving, the person's breathing. Um, I'm moving. I'm shifting in my chair. Uh, my drawing would have to be uh, therefore looser, just by the sheer nature of the the subject and the um, the environment that that I'm in. So the longer you spend, whether this is drawing or painting, I find that the um, initial drawing is, is so crucial, crucial, and and a lot of times I'll spend quite a, di a, a bit of time at, at this stage, just mapping things out, getting it to the point where I'm um, I'm satisfied and I can I can continue. I've put together a good range here of colors that I'm going to be using in this portrait. So if you'll notice, I have two values of red, one slightly warmer than the other, two values of green, one warmer than the other, and three different blues, as well as the lights that are on my face. Uh, the one thing that I seem to be missing is a really intense green, and that's okay. I'm just going to go get as close as I can to what I want to say here. And where should I begin? I should begin with my darks. I'm going to start with a purple. And I'm going to put the purple in the dark shadows on my skin. I chose to use a color rather than a black for my shadows. If I use black, it's usually relegated to um, a few lines here and there. I might add a little bit of black in, in a few spots, but the majority of my darks will be with a color, a deep purple or a deep red or a really dark green. Um, they're more interesting that way. And even if I go in with some black, say in these eyes, having a little base of purple is a good, um, is a good place to start so that that black is not just um, sort of empty and lifeless. So I'm gonna use a Q-tip. I'm gonna go in and smudge some of this. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get rid of all of the texture. I'll just add a little bit of, of a smooth mark. Part of this is because my fingers are too big. It's hard to kind of get into some of these areas. And so I like to use the Q-tip. I'm going to go in and add a darker dark. I want to set the tone of the piece, and so I need a little darker dark. And so I'm going to put some of my green in. It's going to act as a dark, not as a light. I want it to be a light. But this illustrates how dark the piece needs to still get in order for that to be a light. Okay, what am I going to put in the background here? Let's, let's go with a dark bluish black. Let me not forget that the background should contrast before I can really kind of go into the figure. Now, this is a base coat. I'm actually um, having fun applying color. It's, uh, it's very abstract. Um, it's quite uh, ugly. Totally fine with that. With uh, Conti, I'm mixing. I have a limited palette. What I tend to do is I will look at what, um, I'll look at the whole piece and I'll see what needs work. And I'll go there and I'll re reach a certain point, but I won't, I don't want to overwork it. I'll see it, I'll reach a certain point and I'll say, okay, well, this is enough as is. Like right now, the nose is looking good as is, but it's taking, um, it's pulling ahead of other elements. So now I'm going to go into the mouth because that's the least worked up area. And then once I go there, I'm gonna revisit the eyes and just kind of you know, balance my process out a little bit so that it's uh, unified, right? Um, I, think that's, I think that's really important, um, especially when you're working more um, in a loose manner, kind of a painterly approach like this. Also, the one reason why I'm being looser with this is the material I'm using. You know, if I, if, if I wanted this to be more accurate, color pencil's probably gonna get you closer. 
to being more accurate. Um, this is an approximation. When I put my mark down, the mark is behind my, my I can't see it, where, where the mark's gonna land. So, it's, so um, that can be a challenge. So this whole drawing is, is a rough guess. You know, when I put my mark down, sometimes it's a, it's a surprise. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that's where the mark was going to land. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm continually going in and putting shapes of light and shapes of dark in here. But um, sometimes I'll lo layer the lights over the darks. But basically, um, what you'll see is that there's usually a bridge color. And I'm using the paper as the bridge color. In other words, the light blends into the paper and the dark blends into the paper. So there's a little bit, because I don't want to it to turn gray. So I do that everywhere. When it, Here I have the light blending into the dark right there. However, quite often I'll have this sort of a bridge color and, and you just have to be very careful when, when colors collide. Um, and I find more often than not, it's better to have the light collide or layer over the top of the dark. So that's what I'm doing right now. What a ride this drawing has been. I have pushed the color and pushed the thickness of the medium, honestly, to the point of destroying it. At least my understanding of the medium. Like if I go much further, um, I find that uh, I run, I risk um, not being able to bring it back out again. And I'm going to continue for the next um, hour or so, refine it, slow it down, and looking primarily at values, you know, and the, and the, the structure of those, those uh, shadows and the lights, and try to bring, you know, flush out a little more detail, but but at the same time, not losing the this immediacy of it. Is that is what's important for me with this drawing, is to leave kind of this raw element to it. It is a drawing. It's not a photo. You have to decide how much detail do you need, because it's not built in a day. It's not built in one layer. It will inevitably be um, flushed out over time, right? So leaving room for discovery um, is, is, I find, important. So I don't nail it in completely. But I get just enough. And I've, and I've found over the years uh, my own, you know, way of deciding. It's like, okay, that's enough. Now I can, now I can actually go in and and start to render and, and create more volume of the form that I've drawn in. And I think you have to decide for yourself when that is, how much detail you want. There's no right answer there. There's so many ways of drawing from photograph or from life. And this is just one. So there you have it. Self-portrait done in color Conti crayon. Um, I was really interested in leaving a lot of my mark and my color um, really bold, as well as the value. And so I wanted the piece to be really expressive and not overwork it. Um, somewhat uh, painterly is, is, the, is the appearance I was looking for in this piece. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it and um, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.